Pascal Cot demonstrated the multispectral camera and its powerful scanning process, capable of recording important scientific data about great art masterpieces for the French National Art Laboratory. Impressed with his invention, he was invited to scan the most famous painting in the world, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Pascal Cot used his multispectral camera to take 13 photographs of the Mona Lisa. Accurately splitting the light spectrum from ultraviolet to infrared, his camera tests the limits of optical law by using digitization of 240 million pixels as opposed to the 20 million typical of the highest performance camera to date. The camera's range runs the spectrum from objects visible to the human eye to the invisible. Mining this invisible range is what uncovers the secrets. For one, the true colors of the painting can be obtained only by superimposing all 13 photographs on each other. His childhood dream to see inside the most famous painting in the world is about to be realized, uncovering secrets that have been hidden within the Mona Lisa for centuries. Piazzo honor to present for the first time an exact replica of the Mona Lisa and I get the pleasure to digitize and photograph the original one in the Louvre on the 19th of October 2004. And you can see Mona Lisa exactly as I have seen in the Louvre. You can see many notations as well as repairs. You can see that the board has split and two butterfly clips have been used to repair it. The top butterfly clip, beige in color, was lost and no one knows how or when this happened. Notice the wording to the painting guardian at Versailles, office of the director. This probably coincides with the paintings being removed from the castle of Fontainebleau to the castle of Versailles. On the bottom right is the red stamp of the Musée Royal, the fleur-de-lis is the symbol of the French king. The number 316 indicates the position of the Mona Lisa within the Royal Museum collection. The number 29 is inscribed in the middle of the panel, showing that the Mona Lisa was 29th on the list of paintings moved from Versailles to the Louvre. Above the number 29 appears the letter H. This letter is still a mystery, and we do not know why or when this was added to the back of the painting. And you have the French name of Mona Lisa, La Joconde. After Pascal Cot photographed the Mona Lisa, he had a new goal, to digitize all Leonardo da Vinci's paintings. Last September, I got the opportunity to digitize and photograph the famous Lady with an Hermine in Krakow, in Poland. Just how did Pascal Cot discovered that the Mona Lisa originally had eyebrows and lashes. His camera detected that restoration work done on another da Vinci work, Lady with the Ermine, had resulted in the partial removal of her eyebrows and lashes. Cot wondered whether the Mona Lisa had fallen to the same fate, a botched restoration. His curiosity made him revisit his digital files. An international press conference was held in Krakow, Poland, to announce the virtual restoration of Leonardo da Vinci's portrait, Lady with the Ermine. Pascal Cot's virtual restoration uses mathematical calculations to adjust the computerized scans, suggesting how the painting will appear once its varnish has been removed. Cot's restoration reveals all the original pigments used by Leonardo. So, for the first time, we can see the painting's colors as they originally appeared in 1483, as well as other revelations unknown till now. Mr. Cot had discovered that Leonardo da Vinci painted a kind of knot under the chin to hold the veil on her head. What I have discovered? She had wonderful eyelashes and eyebrows. So how it is possible that Leonardo da Vinci paint 
every time. Eyebrows and eyelashes on all of this painting. On the Belle Ferronnière in the Louvre. On the Ginevra di Benci in Washington. On the Lady with an Hermine in Poland. And not on the Mona Lisa. If you look at the Lady with an Hermine, you can clearly see eyebrows and eyelashes. And if you take a very uh, cl close up of the, um, on the Lady with an Hermine, you can see that Leonardo da Vinci have painted also not only the eyebrows, but the shadow of the eyebrows. And if we go back to Mona Lisa, in the visible range, we see nothing. But the camera provides also the infrared layer. Uh, the infrared view uh, gives you the capability to see uh, as a superman, you can see inside the pictorial layer or behind the pictorial layer. So if you take infrared view and the visible range, you can ask to the computer to make a calculation and you see instantly eyebrows and the eyelashes. So I use the infrared capability of my paint of my camera and I take the, just the infrared view. I increase the contrast of the infrared view and I make a mix of the infrared view and the visible range. And you have here on the top, you have the results. You can see that there are eyebrows here and there are one hair here, one eyebrow hair here. So that definitively prove that Mona Lisa have eyebrows and eyelashes. If she has six fingers, one, two, and three, four, five, six. Evidently, Leonardo da Vinci also changed his mind as to the position of the index and middle finger on the left hand. Evelyn Welsh is a professor of Renaissance studies at Queen's College in London, England. She has written many books and articles on women's fashion in the 15th century, including Art of the Edge, Hands in the Renaissance. One of the interesting things about Mona Lisa's hands is that they are ungloved there. You actually see her hands, you see her fingernails, you see the details of the positioning of her folded hands in ways that are quite unusual. Leonardo actually doesn't really know what to do with hands in some of his earlier portraits. They are thrust forward at you in a way that makes you feel you can reach in and perhaps touch her hand in a way that you couldn't touch the rest of her body. The hand is a, an extremely important part of the woman's body, which is increasingly is kept from view, but here it's on full display. If you go back to the story of the portrait, it was the first time in the story of the portrait that we have this position of the hand. And after that, century after, Thousands of painters have made a copy of this position, but they don't understand why Leonardo da Vinci have made this position. Among Leonardo da Vinci's contemporaries was the young Renaissance artist Raphael, who was living in Florence after Leonardo returned from Milan. Raphael was a great admirer of Leonardo's work, and like many artists, he copied the Mona Lisa hand position for several of his portraits. Another mysterious thing was the smile, of course. And you have here, on the corner, you, you have the explanation of uh, uh, the different color. Here is the infrared view of the smile before the final pigment was applied. In contrast, this is the current surface color of the smile in the Louvre's Mona Lisa. And this is what we call the false color. This is a simulation which blends the infrared information that is not visible with information in the visual range. You can see that the smile is slightly wider. In fact, Leonardo da Vinci wanted to outline the smile before he put the final pigment on. 
What was Leonardo da Vinci's reason for making this finger change? Pascal Cotte has observed that it corresponds with a mysterious smile. The infrared fingers are not compatible with a smile. She is very relaxed and her very relaxed hand position would have to parallel her smile. About her hand position. Mona Lisa has her right hand over her left hand. You can see the pleats in the material as her finger delicately picks up a bit of the blanket. Her folded arms show that she is actually holding the blanket over her stomach. She is seated in front of a winter landscape, renovating for us the painting's original context. She is cold and needs the warmth of a blanket. However, Cote's conclusion about the Mona Lisa holding a blanket has been disputed. Other experts argue that the material is more likely to be either a cloak or a mantle. What we're looking at here is an overgarment uh, where you can see the undersleeves here and this, uh, this fabric which Pascal thought was a blanket is a cloak or a mantle. She can't be having a blanket on her lap. It's not, it's not, not possible. <laughs> so um, it's a mantle that she's wearing over her shoulders. We are checking back with Jelle Vandenbroen to see how she is progressing with her virtual restoration of the Mona Lisa's eyebrow and lashes. She is using Leonardo's painting Lady with the Ermine as a point of reference on Leonardo's eyelash and brow technique. Pascal Cote has also detected another secret about the Mona Lisa. Her dress originally had a tracing of white lace around the bodice. We have a copy of the Mona Lisa done by an artist called Luigi Calamata. An Italian printmaker. Many of the plates for his engravings from old masters, such as Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. As you can see, his 16th century print of Mona Lisa shows a trace of her undergarment. 